Hi, I'm Trevor Lund from RevTrev.com, and in this episode, I'm uh, continuing our conversation with Jeff Goins. And uh, if you haven't connected with Jeff yet, make sure you go to GoinsWriter.com, and uh, just you know, he's got all kinds of resources. If you're if you're a writer, and uh, he's got some really good thoughts uh, on other things <laughs> that he's passionate about as well. Uh, Jeff is uh, the author of, uh, let's just start talking more about Rekt too. Rekt is a, is a book that he's uh, launching uh, August 1st. And it's, it's um, actually, yeah, this Jeff I got to talk to you about too. <laughs> we, <laughs> I want to talk today in this episode about uh, how writers to, um, can, can define their brand. And uh, I'm, I'm in a... Uh, I, I was able to uh, preview the book or get a review copy of the book. And so um, he also opened up a, a private Facebook group for reviewers to get on. And um, I got to tell you, sir, I am on uh, about three different social media mastermind groups, about four different mm. WordPress groups, about, you know, all these private groups. I think they're awesome on Facebook. Mm. But yours is by far the most active. You got the most mm. passionate people. You got the mo- how do you do that? <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like it's blowing me away. You got there are gurus teaching people how to do that, and you are blowing them out of the water. It's amazing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just they're you know, it's great people, and uh, uh, some of the people there's about hundred people in our group, you know, and, and some of the people I chose, um, I, you know, I chose everybody for a reason. Um, but you know, I, I chose some people because I, you know, I wanted to connect with their audience and, and they, they wanted to help me promote the book. Um, you know, so they had a platform that I, you know, I was interested in, in leveraging to get the book out. Uh, some people, uh, I asked to be a part of the group because they had really great ideas and, uh, some people I just sensed that like this would be a really good thing for them. And I knew that, um, you know, maybe they didn't have the biggest platform, but I knew that uh, they would learn through the experience. And because that was valuable for them, I knew that they were going to be serious about the, you know, about it. And so um, it was much more important to me to ask people who were, were going to be honored to be a part of the group that were going to, to, you know, not just take it for granted and and realize, you know, for, to them it was it was kind of a, a big deal because I knew if they believed that, even if they only had you know a hundred Twitter followers or something, that they would be really passionate and they would do everything that they could to tell as many people as possible about the book, as opposed to somebody who you know just feels like um, you know sort of in, entitled or, or or something. So I think that's part of it. Is I, is a lot of the people. I mean, I've I've seen several every day, several times. Somebody will say, "I'm so honored to be a part of this group," and yeah. and that's really cool. So I'm I'm glad that the community sustains itself. You know, I think when you when you were saying that, you hit right on it. Um, I think yours group was the only group. Well, it was it was there was an application basically to be be a reviewer, right? That you had. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. It was absolutely <laughs> absolutely brilliant because every, all the other groups, it's like okay, well. Um, there was no, there was no, there's no application to get in, you know, like it was like, okay, we want you in because of X, Y, or Z. And so when I go to those groups, it's, I'll put input in if there's something I can get, like if if there's something I can share, I'll, I'll say something, but I really don't care what's going on in those groups. (laughs) But but yours is like, man, what's going on here? What's going on there? There's people that are just passionate. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so let's talk about like what is a writer's brand? How how can people how can a writer get a brand? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Uh, that's another thing that I think there's misconceptions about. Oh, what I've experienced as somebody who's been online for you know been involved in social media in some respect for um, you know the past six six or seven years now. Um, the the thing that I I, th- I think I've learned is that uh, everybody wants to be authentic you know everybody wants mm. to share all of their stuff you know whatever it is you know thing likes dislikes skeletons in the closet like everybody wants to put themselves totally out there but we've all seen the you know people whose blogs we read or follow them on twitter and like they're sharing a little too much <laughs> like it's it's a little too close for comfort um and that makes us uncomfortable because we understand that the medium uh 
is impersonal. Even if it's super, super personal, like you and I aren't sitting in the same room together. And so there's something lost mm -hmm. in, in that. And as much as we try to compensate for it, it's not the same as sitting in the same room. So I think we have to be aware of that when we're trying to represent ourselves online. So, you know, what is a brand? A brand is like part of your personality, but I think it's a simple version of mm. your personality. And so... Um, a tweetable version? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, all, like think about any sort of like major brand that you, you know, resonate with. And there's typically like one thing that you associate that brand with. Now, the, it doesn't have to be like a product or service. For example, you know, Apple. Uh, Just think different. That's what that's, you know, it's... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a worldview. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, so, so, so what's cool about that is, is Apple is no longer a computer company. It's not even, you know, a technology company. You know, it's, 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 a, it's an organization that creates innovative products to change the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, if, if Apple came out with like, um, you know, a, a breakfast cereal, that might be weird, you know. <laughs> Unless somehow like it was just like amazing breakfast cereal that like <laughs> caused you to like, you know, just think and live differently. Um, but, uh, you know, so like that's, that's the, the same thing is true for your like author brand. You have to be uh, aware of the fact that, that people, um, when they experience brands and you are a brand, I mean, that's an important part for a lot of authors is they're like, I don't, I don't care about branding. I don't care about marketing. If you think in like the, the most simplest, uh, you know, version of, of what a brand is, it's um, like think think of it literally. A brand is is like you know back in the days of you know cowboys and horses and and you know uh, that was the main mode of transportation. Uh, a brand was how somebody marked you know an animal as their property, right? Mm. Like you you branded it. You know, you took a yeah. piece of steel and you put your you know, initials in its butt or something. Uh, and so like that's that's what a brand is um, online too. Like you are sort of um, burning into the minds of your readers or listeners or audience um, who you are and what you're about. And so it has to be simple. It has to be remem uh, memorable, and it has to um, resonate with people. And so that's why uh, once you start writing in a certain genre, it's hard to get out of that genre. Um, that's why when you start blogging about a certain topic, it's kind of what people expect. Now, here's the caveat. It, you don't have to just write about one thing. Mm -hmm. Apple is a great example of that. What you do have to do is you have to embody one worldview. Yeah. And so a great example of that online, I think, is is um, Seth Godin. So Seth can write about anything. He did start writing about marketing. Like that was his thing. Like he started writing about marketing and business uh, uh, online with you know um, you know how technology and communication was changing. But now he writes about education and politics and the economy and uh, international development and, and charity and all of these different things. And uh, what he's doing is um, sharing a worldview. And the worldview is basically the system is broken and we can fix it. Mm -hmm. And so he can write about anything because he's conditioned people to understand his worldview and we'll, we'll care about it. So, I mean, that's an example. And I think, you know, an author starts in one place, but all you're trying to do is train your readers to understand your voice. And so, you know, what, what is a brand? It's, it's a lot of different things, but it needs to be simple. And I guess it's it's a very succinct, simple, memorable version of your personality. In other words, your voice. Mm. It's really, uh, have you seen, um, there's a uh, TED Talk by Simon Sinek. I yeah, his name. It is, yep. it, about the why, the why, yeah, why the why great. is important. It's like wow, mm -hmm. same resonates. I, I was wondering if you heard it because it was like very, very, very much with that. Uh, That's right. Same yeah, kind of tone. But mm -hmm. um, how in in your book on um, I'm so sorry. I'm can't remember. You're a writer, right? You're a writer. Uh, you're, you're a writer. That's the name of it. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah, a uh, great. Um, you talk about how writers can find their voice. And we talked a little bit about this in the last video, but um, uh, you're you're so correct. Like, I mean, you're you're distinct. 
part of your brand is just being so conversational. It's just being down to earth. It's like you're you're likable, everybody. <laughs> it's not like you try to be likable. It's like you're naturally likable. And um, the the uh, that that comes from your voice, right? Like that's that's mm-hmm. how your your writing style. And what's what? Uh, how can how can writers find their voice? Again, they have to start writing. Uh... And uh, I, I would add to that, um, you, you just start somewhere and, and you, you, you find it. A voice is something that you find. It's not something that you know ahead of time and go, this is how I'm going to write. Um, I, I remember uh, at a conference, a, a, a friend of mine and I were at a, a, a conference and he got to meet this, this um, author named Ted Decker, who, who you might be familiar with, you know, uh, a big, you know, uh, fiction author has written you know, 20, 30 books, maybe more. And my friend asked him, because he, he wants to be a fiction author as well, he said, uh, how long does it take for an author to find his voice? And my friend, in his mind, knew that he was going, that he wanted to write five novels in his life, just five uh, stories. Mm-hmm. And Ted said, well, it takes about, you, you're just kind of, you know, figuring it out for maybe the first few books. And so it takes about six or seven books for you to really find your voice. <laughs> So my friend only wants to write five books, and so, you know, basically, you know, this, you know, well-established, best-selling author uh, is telling him, you know, the first five books are just sort of throwaway. Yeah. So uh, I think it takes a, I think it takes a, a lot of writing. Malcolm Gladwell would say, you know, ten thousand hours. Um, but here, what I found is a voice is not just what you want to write about, and it's not just how you want to write. A voice. A good writing voice is where your passion meets other people's needs, and it doesn't mean that you know you're just like a you know how to do it yourself blogger person. Um, it just means that if you're writing what you want to write and it doesn't resonate with anybody, you probably haven't found your voice yet. Mm. And, and I say that with a, you know kind of with a caveat that. Um, it could be that your audience just doesn't exist yet. You know, I mean, think about uh, authors that were rejected, you know, by their contemporaries, but we, you know, but are revered as geniuses later on. I think mm-hmm. you know James James Joyce is an example of that in art. I mean, Van Gogh is an example of that. They thought he painted like a child, and now they under you know, uh, hundreds of years later, they understand his technique. So I mean, but the bottom line is. Art is supposed to be enjoyed, you know, and writing mm-hmm. is, a, is a form of art. So at some point, somebody needs to be reading your work. And, um, but you can't write stuff that you hate because then you're going to build this platform on, on being a phony, basically, and you're going to resent it. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think all great art comes from passion and life. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you don't completely know your voice until you put yourself out there and people experience it. And they... You know, I don't know what other people's experiences are, but I have found my voice in the context of community where people go, mm. wow, this really resonates with me. And I'm like, really? This is how I've always written. But then I look back at stuff I've written, and it's not how, I was, how I've always written. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steve Pressfield talks about this uh, in, when he talk, in, in his book Turning Pro, and he talks about it a bit in, in The War of Art. And it, he says it's not something, like when you really show up and do the work and find your voice and become a professional whatever um you usually don't notice Mm because you're just you've just got your head down and you're just working it's practice it's like when you finally get in shape and you're doing the same exercises you've always done but the muscle is now really getting tighter and solidifying Mm -hmm. and it's not as much of an uphill battle and you're you're building upon weeks and months and years of of effort and so i think that's what you know finding your voice is like but for me, it's been I, I'm writing stuff that that moves me and resonates with me, and so it feels true and authentic, and it also resonates with other people. That's so great, Jeff. Thank you so much for this, and uh, I want to uh, come back and follow up with a thought that you shared on this one because I think we we need to explore that a bit more. But uh, Jeff Goins, everyone at GoinsWriter dot com, uh, just. Uh, and look for his book, Wrecked, uh, that's coming up soon. We'll, we're going to talk about that in a little bit more, too. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thanks, Trevor. Bye. This episode has been brought to you by Expectancy Press, resources that impart hope and empower destiny.
What do you do when bad things happen? You can thrive with the Live Positively resources at RevTrev.com.